Hello and welcome to ICG Podcast episode 42. I'm Abdul and with me is the absence of Yashwant. I'll be doing this episode solo again. I think this is my fourth solo episode. I don't know, I don't keep count of those anyways. But yeah, maybe I'm accurate, maybe I'm not. But yeah, since I'm doing this today, it might be a very short podcast. So, Also, this there wasn't much of any big news for this week so yeah i guess um it's gonna be a short one so yeah we'll start off by saying well i'll start off by saying what are the new games that'll be coming to the games catalog for this month i think we'll be able to play on 14 i think 16th i think they'll be available on the 16th yeah and the first comment of the night as always it's hungry wolf hey man thank you for joining the podcast how are you doing? So yeah, now uh, while he responds to that, meanwhile, I'll go back to mentioning the catalog games for this month. And before I can do so, Aishwarya is also here. Hey man, thanks for joining the podcast. Oh, Sanjay is also here. Thank you for joining the podcast, man. How are you doing? Hope you all are doing good. And if you're here to just to ask about DJ, AJ, um, no, that's not happening anytime soon. Don't worry. You know what? Let me see if I can do something about that. I don't know if the screen will vanish. Okay, never mind. My mouse has vanished. So, I'm not going to do any experiments. I'm just going to... Oh my god. Okay. Great, I lost my mouse. No more experimenting. Okay. Where is my mouse? Hopefully I don't stop the podcast by mistake. And I ended up opening Spotify. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> Coming back to this. So this says I am well Abdul. Hope you are well. Yeah, I am well man. Thank you very much. And I cannot see the rest of your message because obviously it's blocked by the stupid heart emoji i don't know what it's there for uh yeah so i says his dj j was brother and he can i can't see that word and he says ah he can ask if he comes and hungry wolf was like don't miss with the sacred tech yeah it's new tech and i don't know why only my mouse vanishes but anyways as i was saying uh, the new catalog games have been announced I think they will be available to play on the 16th, which will be the coming Tuesday. So yeah, uh, lots of people thought of it as a W. Many people on our server didn't think it was good enough. They're all expecting AAA titles, major games to show up because we're paying for that much. So might as well expect it. Not many indie fans, but it's a good it's a good month for indie fans. So anyways, the games that will be available are Animal Well, Tales of Kenzera Zao, and this was showcased, I think, an Xbox Director preview, I think, uh, a month or so ago, I'm not sure. But yeah, this one gave me the, it's a Metroidvania, it reminded me quite a lot of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, so if you like that game, you'll like this as well. Dave the Diver, that was an indie game that was nominated for the game awards so yeah it's coming to the playstation as well and in may there'll be a godzilla dlc i don't know what is godzilla doing in an indie game about a diver i don't know anyways the next game is odd ballers then there's a construction simulator of course you have to have a simulator about everything almost everything what simulators have i had now until now where a truck simulator bus simulator Farming simulator, uh, power wash simulator, construction simulator, and uh, oh ho ho! Today is a interesting day indeed. Best brethren has shown up for the podcast. Hey man, how are you doing? Surprised to see you here. And uh, I should have says Godzilla would be the biggest. Heart emoji is blockade again. 
fish net in day of the diver yeah probably i don't think he's getting caught in a fish net yeah pc building simulator any other simulators you guys can think of that i've not named yet in the meantime uh the crew 2 is coming to playstation plus and then we have raji an ancient epic looking forward to playing that meanwhile brethren says doing great how are you doing i'm doing good thank you very much man euro truck simulator that's what i said first itself so yeah i, I play that game i mean i was anticipating its release when i was small i mean back when i was in 11th waiting for the launch date and then finally getting to play it, it was an awesome game yeah i should says goat simulator did we have a duck simulator i don't know we are goose game but that's not a simulator but i don't think we have a duck simulator yet but yeah and very soon a squirrel with the gun okay that's out of nowhere but okay that'll be interesting to see anyways the next one is lego ninjago movie video game very odd name but okay next one is now now no now 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 play with your food okay the sequel to deliver us moon, the moon is deliver us deliver us mars and then lego marvel avengers stray blade <laughs> yeah no stellar babe in this and miasma chronicles i should i think i should try out miasma chronicles and uh, brother and says euro truck simulator is the best chill game I have, I have friends who played that for hundreds of hours. Yeah, I'm the same kind of guy. I've played that game for hundreds of hours. Agarwal says, also a predator animal well would be a good game, I'm guessing. Yes, that's correct. And Aishwarya says, I added the trailer on Discord. I will check it out after I'm done with the podcast, obviously. But yeah. Anyways. Next interesting bit of news. The fall of Fallout 4 next gen update will be launching on April 25th on Xbox consoles and well just the Series X and S and PS5. Apparently it's a larger resolution 60 FPS and lots of updated visuals I guess so next gen. So it's good because this is pretty much like Fallout season. You can claim Fallout uh, I think 76. Fallout 76 is free to claim on uh, Amazon Prime Gaming. And uh, now the Fallout first season is also available. And uh, yeah, now the next gen update is going to launch this month. So it's Fallout season. And Bro says PC also. Also, oh, Fallout 4, the next gen update is coming to PC as well. Okay, that's nice. Anyways. The next thing is the Remnant 2 DLC, the Forgotten Forgotten Kingdom will be launching on April 23rd. So it's time to call your co-op buddies and start another run on Remnant 2 again. I think Aaron might probably do so, I'm not sure. Because he has such a huge backlog. That has a his backlog has a backlog for all I know. And uh, Hungry Will says there's a huge lag in the Boston area on consoles for Fallout 4. Already? I hope they fix it in their next gen update. Or will it be a next gen bug? Who knows? Could happen. And then Crash 4, it's about time, has sold over 5 million copies. Okay, good. Then Man Eater, the shark game, very chill. Play as a shark, eat other things, eat other sharks, eat other fish, eat people, attack them on boats, uh, equip yourself with missile launchers and lasers and just make a monstrosity called a shark. It's an RPG, I guess, where you play as a shark, so yeah. I should definitely try it out. It'll be crazy, but it'll be fun. And I sure is like, I'm still confused on Stellar Blade. My backlog is confused than me. Say what? So you're still confused on whether to buy it or not? 
I say buy it because I already did. I pre-ordered it. Speaking of which, that reminds me. Less than two weeks till Stellar Babe is out. Yeah. Hopefully I get it within the same date or probably the next day. I'm not going to play it immediately. That's a different issue. But still, having Stellar Babe, that'll be something. Anyways, moving on. Call of Duty Vanguard, which is one of the most disliked Call of Duties amongst the fans, has reportedly sold over 30 million copies. So even if you don't like Call of Duty, it manages to sell 30 million copies. Wow. Actually, it's like time for the Babe clan to arise. To rise. That's not the only thing that's rising. Okay, sorry. Bad joke. Should not do that. Um, yeah, anyways. Yes, my god. Warhorse Studios, the developers behind Kingdom Come Deliverance, will be revealing its new game next Thursday on April 18th at 11.30 p.m. IST. I actually took the time to change the CST time to IST time and all. So, yeah. A very reasonable time considering the amount of showcases and other stuff that are happening at like 2, 3 or even 5 in the morning. So, yeah, this is a good time to watch it. Funny thing is, I just bought Kingdom Come Deliverance for around 200 rupees. I think a month or so ago. So, yeah. I'm interested to see how the second... Maybe it might be a sequel. Who knows? Let's see. Hungry Wolf says, Man Eater has a story-based campaign. Ooh. A story for a shark. Okay, that's interesting. And I sure says, Man Eater is awesome. Oh, so you played it. That's good to know. It's always cool to play as a shark. Unless, of course, you're a killer shark in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. That just sucks. So, yeah. Hopefully, we play as another shark, which is good. Anyways, Activision has released a Microsoft... Microsoft... Oh, something's wrong with my mouth. Microsoft Store version of Spyro Reignited Trilogy. It seems like a Game Pass drop for Activision Blizzard games. Back catalog titles is near. And hello Adi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing? And Aisha says, I pre-ordered on PC. What, you pre-ordered Man Eater on PC? Wow, man. So you like sharks a lot. Nice. Perhaps you should buy shark cards in GTA 5. Since you're a shark fan. Well, no, don't do it. Don't pay. Don't pay Rockstar Games. I should have says play the hell out of it. It was fun watching what the shark can do. I mean, yeah, it's a game, so it can do stuff that even normal sharks can't do. So it's good. Adi says I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for asking. Anyways, moving on. So as I said, uh, Spyro reignited trilogy. There was a Microsoft Store version released by Activision. Not yet confirmed on when it will be available to purchase and stuff like that. But yeah, this is the first sign for... Uh, and apparently it might also drop on Game Pass. So this is like one of the signs that uh, some of the old games coming to Game Pass uh, is going to happen soon. So they expect the next drop to happen next Tuesday. So... Maybe another game will be announced, who knows? And Adi says, I need. I read a report, it is going around the community, that players are playing more old games and new releases and I find myself doing too. I mean, yeah, of course. I don't find that odd at all because I play many old games for nostalgia factor. Many people are playing the older games that they missed out on previous generations. The only exception ones are the graphics uh, focused people who are like, no, I cannot play 30 FPS. I only want 4K 68. Yeah, those people, they skip out on old generation games. But yeah, every now and then I like to, you know, just uh, check out old PC games from the early 2000s. Some PS2 games, some in Game Boy Advance games. PS3, 
I'm just too lazy to take out my PS3 to play those games, but someday I will play those games. And Hungry Wolf is like that is partly because Fortnite and other online games are more than seven years old. I mean, yeah, but people are still playing them. My God, it's been seven years. Uh, this is, I mean, older games are way better also in my opinion. I mean, I agree with you, man. There used to be a special charm to old games, which even if you finish, you still want to play them again. And this was back in the days when there was no trophies or 100 percentage, but you still did it anyways because it was fun. You enjoyed the game. Now, like nah. But yeah, uh, if this console generation is any indication, then yeah, obviously. I think we only have PS4 is almost four years old, and there's only 15, almost 15 exclusives to its name. So. Not very a good, not very good generation. So yeah. Hello, Sensipa. Thank you for joining the podcast. How are you doing, man? And yes, moving on. According to the Verge, the Xbox Summer Showcase is set to take place on Sunday, June 9th. So I still got another hour and a half to two months to go. So yeah. So it'll be feature, featuring Years of War Six, Avowed, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Flight Simulator 2024 and the next Call of Duty. Interesting. And we have a new viewer. Halius Haliaxmus. I've never tried pronouncing your name before, man. I've just been calling you come back after lunch. <laughs> but thank you for joining the podcast, man. How are you doing? And he said, uh, let me try pronouncing him. Haliaxmus. Haliaximus. 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 I hope that's right. But yeah, older games were just games. Now a lot of them tried to be a book, a movie, a social movement, a social network and whatnot. Well, interesting. I mean, yeah. I can, I think GTA 5 or online is sort of like that. Use your phone, use the web browser. And everything so but yeah I mean uh, some games are inspired by books but then if the game is good it becomes some movie or book or something like that so yeah I, I, I get what you mean but it's right well I pronounced the name correctly Haliaximus I'll remember that angry will says he just finished his lunch yeah it's very early, man. It's only like around 10 18 at night. So he's finished lunch quite early, I must say. Anyways, moving on. According to emails received by Windows Central, Xbox has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility. Sarah Bond also mentioned that Xbox became the biggest platform for Diablo 4 since it launched on Game Pass. I mean, that's not surprising to say, because of course it's on Game Pass, so everyone is going to try it out, if they have a subscription, that is. And uh, new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility, but uh, still no complete games available on discs, or any mentions of discs in the future. It's going to preserve digital games. Mm, yes. I don't find that intriguing. Haliaximus is like, I'm perpetually on lunch. How much do you eat, man? If you stop lunch, I think at this point you can probably stop world hunger. You're eating all the food that everyone else requires. Hungry of is like, reply to older games comment. Which is why everyone should play the Bookwalker Thief of Tales. I see what you did there, man. I see what you did there. <laughs> I don't know man, I should play Sea of Stars but I completely lost the motivation to play it because it's been so long I'm not even playing any of the new games I get I'm just spending my time playing GTA 5 with my friends when I can and would you look at that someone new has joined the podcast it's that Indian Gamer how are you doing man, surprised to see you here and the question is, oh AJ, we're playing Rise of the Ronin or what? 
I thought you were going to sell your disc today or tomorrow. I don't know. So I don't see the point. I decided that I'll pretty much play it with the pigeon when he gets the time. So yeah, if you're going to sell the disc, go ahead, man. Don't wait on my account because Bilal already sold his. He's like, but you have no friends. I don't have a friends. I have a pigeon. Yes. And Hali XMS says, perpetually at lunchtime, an interlude to lie down and rest in the liminal space, a respite from the day's relentless chase. That is quite poetic, man. Very poetic. Did you think of it when you were at lunch? <laughs> and actually, is like, I am there with AJ. Thank you, man. I'm going to wait till DLC. Okay, keep waiting. I'll play when the DLC comes out with you. If it's free. Hopefully. But yeah, I will see about that. And is Brother in still here or has he left? Because he'll be probably buy the game a year later when all the DLCs are available. But yeah, moving on. EA has announced that Season 7 of Battlefield 2042 will be its last season. The game will still get some new content, but no new seasons. Okay, that's great. Also, EA Motive, the makers of Dead Space, is joining Criterion, DICE, and Ripple Effect as developers for the next Battlefield. Ooh la la. I wonder how that will be. And yes, as if PAL World was <laughs> not criticized enough, they have released an up they're gonna release an update called the Arena Update Arena Update which will launch later this year. So, Pocket Pair says, and I quote, The PAL Arena makes its way to PAL World in 2024. Battle against other players, pitting both yourself and your PALs against them. Train the strongest PALs and defeat all of your rivals, end quote. Why does this seem familiar? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's basically a Pokemon battle, but you also get in on the fun, I guess. The trainers fight while the Pokemon fight with them. Don't give this idea to Nintendo. Because once they do it, they'll start suing these guys for it. That's just the way they are. Another interesting news. Vampire Survivors is coming to both PlayStation 4 and 5 this summer. It's already available on Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, the Switch, on mobile and PC. Quite a multi-platform title. Quite addicting one as well. And Vampire Survivors Operation Guns DLC will be launching on March 9th. Okay, good. With good news, sometimes bad news always follows. So, EA is increasing the price for EA Play. Not surprised. So, they have two packages. One is the regular one and the next one is the Pro package. And so, the pricing for the regular monthly price is has gone up from $4.99 to $5.99 okay that didn't seem like much I thought it was even bigger and the yearly price has gone up from $29.99 to $39.99 so the pro plan has gone from the monthly amount of $14.99 to $16.99 and the annual amount has gone from $19.99 to 119.99 wow and I said it says vampire survivors to OP yes it is you should try a potato that's also fight quite fun and when I say potato hungry wolf will just show up out of nowhere but since this uh, audio is delayed I mean audio and video both are delayed by 40 seconds on YouTube I think it'll show up after 40 seconds who knows Sanjay says did we get to Raji we already crossed it a long time ago man but yeah, it's coming out hopefully by Tuesday. So you'll get to play it. Let's see how it goes. Uh, moving on. Ray Gresco, the former chief development officer at Blizzard and Bjorn Tornquist from Ubisoft Massive are joining Disney Games leadership team after Disney and Epic announced their partnership last February. Ooh la la. That's kind of interesting. And Hungry Rule says, No, you haven't, but some gamers have. 
I think that's a reply to Sanjay, I guess. But yeah, I was expecting Hungry Wolf to say this, but Aliaximus says Protector 2 OP2, indeed. I played it. Uh, I wanted to keep playing it, but uh, now. Hungry Wolf says, and this is what is expected. We are all brotatoes, even someone who doesn't want to finish Sea of Stars. Yeah, that was a jab at me. Brotatoes, brotatoes. This thing will always be funny to me. Potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, tomato. But yeah, brotatoes, potatoes. And Adi says, Raji is a very good game. Played it back in 2022. Very beautiful. Well, you get the chance to play it again if you want to. But yeah. I'm going to play it for the first time. I think I missed it back in 2022. I'm going to take this opportunity to play it. Hopefully. And uh, Hungry Wolf do not tell me to play Sea of Stars. And look who is here. Reflect is here. Saying, yo AJ. Hey man, how are you doing? I'm surprised you're here and not playing game modes with everybody else. But uh, good to see you here. Thanks for joining the podcast. <laughs> Well, yeah, I was expecting this. Come join GT and do the podcast from there. Nah, man, my PC is not powerful enough to handle both streaming uh, games as well as doing the podcast, so no. I cannot play when I stream. I'll be too distracted. So, yeah, I'm going to skip on that offer. So, yeah, moving on. NetEast and NetEast and Blizzard have renewed their agreement to bring back Blizzard titles to mainland China beginning summer 2024. Microsoft and NetEase have also entered into an agreement to explore bringing new NetEase titles to Xbox consoles and other platforms. whoop de doo Great. So yeah, I can be seeing more uh, non-Xbox related stuff coming to Xbox. Because as you know, in previous episodes I said that they were looking into bringing the Epic Game Store and itch.io to Xbox itself. So, yeah, who knows? Anyway, this thing has been a bit of back and forth news regarding who you ask. But, uh, anyways, according to Jeff Krub, EA Motive was working on a Dead Space Part 2 remake, which was in the concept phase, but it got cancelled slash shelved because of the lackluster sales of the first remake. They are now working on Iron Man and Battlefield. That was earlier in the week, but then later on in the week they gave an update saying an EA spokesman told IGN that the claim is false and Dead Space 2 wasn't in development before being cancelled. He says, and I quote, We don't normally comment on rumors, but there is no validity to the story. End quote. And then even later in the week, Bloomberg released an article or something saying that EA shelved the Dead Space series last spring itself. The first uh, remake missed the EA's expectations. I, uh, I don't know, they sold, they sold 1 to 5 million, I don't know how many million. But they, it was not as high as expected, I guess. So after Motive finished the first remake, a small team spent a few months conceiving new ideas for a new entry. But it got cancelled because it was not financially worth it. And moving on, sources have told Insider Gaming that Prince of Persia The Sands of Time remake got an overhaul with a more realistic approach. This includes a graphical overhaul, new animations, and new mechanics for combats and parkour. And the previous voice actor who was roped in for the game. Uh, he also voices Peter Parker in the Spider Man games, by the way. Yuri Lowenthal. Lowenthal, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but yeah. Yuri will no longer voice the prince. Sage. Moving on, uh, this is related to a comment that is said previously by Highly Eximus, I'm guessing, where games get made into books or movies. Well, this is the same case. Black Salt's game, uh, Black Salt Games, the studio that made the indie hit Dredge. Is going to be getting a live action film adaptation from Story Kitchen. Mm, Story Kitchen, nice name. And Cowboy Bebop or Beboop. Bebop, I think it's Bebop. 
or is it bebop i don't know how to pronounce it but i'm just gonna call it cowboy bebop or whatever yeah bebop bebop whatever uh so yeah cowboy bebop the movie with english dub is free on youtube oh time to watch it then i don't have the link yet but maybe i'll check it out later and moving on fallout season 2 is already in the works wow they just released it and it's already in the works seems like they relocated to california for its second season thanks to 25 million dollars in california tax credits you get credits for paying tax i don't know interesting hungry will says prince of sands of time now the sand may get into your eyes oh or be that it's 3D. Who knows? Nahali Axima says Ubisoft is doing, doing, he is doing twice. He is doing great with Prince of Persia IP. I'm on Hopium for Good Sands of Time remake. And Angry Wolf does it again. He is pronounced Cowboy Bebop. Without telling me how it's pronounced, he just types the name once again. I'm gonna call it Bebop. I'll just call it Bebop. Bebop. I think Bebop is better there. Yeah. The next thing is Gearbox Publishing, which wasn't sold with Gearbox to Take Two, has rebranded itself as Arc Games. Okay. Let's see what they make. And yeah, as I said, if it's just me, I just rush through the entire uh, news section. So, we reached the last segment, which is the one I hate the most, the layoff segments. So, yeah, uh, Pyrtania Media, I think it's Pyre, uh, Peer, Pyrtania, Pyrtania, it's Pyrtania, whatever. Uh, it's shutting down possibility space, which was founded in 2021. Only a few weeks after they shut down Crop Circle Games. Uh, okay, that's always hard. And EA reportedly kills Apex Legends UK QA team. Well, there goes the quality down the trash. They let go of 50 contracted workers just a few weeks before their contracts expire. Couldn't even let them finish their contracts. Nah, bad EA, bad. And then Singularity 6, the developers behind Palia lays off 35 percentage of its staff and uh, lastly ascendant studios the developers of immortals of avm which is free for this month on ps plus essential go claim it has repeatedly furlogged furlogged or furloughed furlogged i think uh, usually gh is pronounced as f right so furloughed the majority of its staff so I think the studios are on its way out the door. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess they put too much of expectations on a first person mage game. They could have made third person or something else. I don't know. It didn't really stick with people. So yeah, it's been flopped and the studio is in danger now. And that about covers the news. So, well, one good news is that Embracer Group has not been mentioned in this week's podcast so number of podcasts without a mentioning embracer group is now currently standing at two so yes hopefully it stays that way and angry will says well there has to be someone to the heart emoji is blocking it so i can't read it well there has to be someone to end the jokes what is i don't i don't Okay, someone is spamming the laughing emoji. Interesting. Hold on, let me see if I can read. Uh, someone has to. Ah, okay, so, well, there has to be someone to miss the jokes and then someone to explain them. I mean, yeah, that usually happens with Yashwant. He misses the jokes, I have to explain it to him. But he's not here, so I guess I have to make the jokes and someone else has to explain them. Or I'll explain them myself. But yeah. Oh my god. I started again. 
I want to type it is pronounced for load, but AJ might furlow me. For loft. For loft. I want to Google it, but I don't want my stream to skip frames or get slowed down. So yeah, I'm not going to search for it. I'll check it later. I should have done my research before because I know it's why I'm doing something like this. Uh, but yeah, that about covers all the news we had for this week and I'm completely free so if you guys have anything to talk about I'm always open for conversation so yeah I shall wait this is always the awkward phase waiting for people to say something but yeah I will wait mm. Usually at this time I would have played some music, but then I don't want to get copyright stating. Oh ho ho! Would you look at that? Someone new is here. Oh Sam is here. Hello, thank you for joining the podcast. And you're like, come when it's end. After I announce all the news is over, you come and like, is it ending? Well, maybe. It depends on if you want to keep conversation because now I'm open to questions. I sure is like the legend is here. Yeah, and Sanjay is like no. So yeah, if you guys have anything to talk about, let's talk about it. Because I have time. We are, we are 30 minutes ahead of usual schedule. So yeah. And OS, I was like, I joined late. Not an issue, at least you didn't completely miss out on the stream. You're still live. So yeah, if you have anything to ask or say, go ahead. Feel free to do so. And Aisha says, guy who said no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother is still here. Wow. He says, oh, what's up? Ah, okay. So what are you playing these days, Aaron? I um, Still haven't started Baldur's Gate 3, that's for certain. Uh, what else? Let me try remembering what you were playing at the moment. Neo, you completed. So. I don't know, man. I forgot. I don't mind. I said, it's like, what do you expect Babe will be like? August Legacy level or Armored Quarter 6 level? I don't know, man. All I know is that Babe will be stellar. <laughs> I'm not having any expectations. I just know that there will be a stellar babe and uh, that's it. I'm just gonna play. Alex Mas is like AJ, what is your frame favorite game OSTs? Let me see. Uh definitely on the top of the list will definitely be both of the near games. Uh, especially a Song of the Ancients and uh, End of Yora. Those are the best ones, in my opinion. I watch them. I listen to them a lot on Spotify whenever I have the chance. And uh, Angry Wolf is like, Do you know to increase the length of the game without increasing the cost? Game developers use to increase the difficulty so the gamers will take more time to complete the game. No, I did not know that. But that is an interesting... I mean, yeah, that's a valid reason to do so. Um... Yeah, make it harder so people play for longer. That also depends on the person if they would like to play a hard game. Uh, but yeah. So Sam says, Hogwarts level series is good. Did you complete the game? I haven't even played it. So, yeah. And Sanjay says, Hogwarts Legacy is nothing like GTA. I was lied to. I have the same question as Sam, man. Who told you it was like GTA? What are you going to do? Steal someone else's broom? Yeah, I should, yeah, it's like the guy who got scammed. I mean, it's his fault for thinking it will be this thing. And Aaron says, yes, Remnant 2 I'll play. I'll play with a couple of people. And you know what, maximum two people you can only play as a three-person party in the game, right? So, yeah. Hopefully the DLC will be fun for you when you go up. So, yeah, do it. Just do it. Like they say, Nike. Just do it. 
manager seriously plays your stars and complete it sometime soon. Because Aoden Chronicles 100 Heroes is coming up. That's gonna be a long game. Hungry Wolf says that is the reason 80s and 90s games were so difficult. I mean, yeah, but they were also. They were difficult, but they still had replay value to them. Sanjay is like, that'll be a start, stealing brooms. Escaping cop wizards. Okay, now I get it. And uh, cop wizards, no, those will just be your professors in the school. They'll be taking you off of your broom. With some spell make you fall off the broom. Break a few bones. Get sent to the infirmary. Like, which one was it? I think it was Prisoner of Azkaban. Use a spell on you so that you lose your bones. Make you drink some sort of very gross tasting potion which makes you grow back your bones. I don't know, man. I think it's a possibility there. But yeah. Speaking of 80s and 90s game, which 80s or 90s game was hard for me? As a kid playing those games, everything was hard for me, so I can't think of one. Yeah, so Angry Wolf says they only made one or two levels really difficult. Example, Lion King and Aladdin. Lion King had the monkey level and Aladdin had the volcano. Ah, yeah, I remember playing those. Those were classics. I mean, I couldn't even reach those levels you spoke of. I couldn't. I think the maximum I did was one level, maybe two. I haven't got past that. OSM is like 90s games were difficult because of moment issues as well. Like how Silent, issue, Silent Hill was. I mean, yeah, back then you could not use the mouse to move the camera around. It's always fixed and it always was like uh, it changed wherever you went, so you always had an awkward camera angle. I know that pain because I played all the three God of War games because the camera, it will not move according to where you're moving. I mean, you couldn't control the camera. So you'll be trying a very hard segment and suddenly the camera will pan to a different direction. And it'll just mess up your game. So yeah. But that is also one of the nostalgic factors. So... Yeah. What are the 90s games I play a lot? It's been so long ago that I completely forgot. Aladdin and Lion King was one. What else did I play? Uh, it's not necessarily 90s, but I think I played Resident Evil 4 as a kid. I didn't know what to do. Before I even reached the village, I was destroyed, so I uninstalled the game. Uh, I think I mostly spent my uh, early days playing GTA Vice City. And then, of course, the OP San Andreas. That will always be my favorite GTA. And yeah. I swear it's like new Tom, Tom Raider, Tom Raider news. I'm sorry, I didn't get any news regarding that. And uh, Ali XM is like Contra OP. I mean, yeah, man, lots of people have played Contra. Back in Dubai, I don't remember playing Contra. I mean, none of my friends ever mentioned that game. Only after coming here, they were like, Did you play Contra? Contra was so awesome. I'm like, Nah, man, I've never played Contra. How was I'm the mummy? I have vague memories of playing the mummy. I don't remember how it was, but I think I played it. Hungry Wolf says, You might have played Dangerous Dave and Ski Free. Yes, Dangerous Dave I played. I mean, my. Me, my brother, and my uncles, we were all like hooked into that game. We would all try to see who could cross each level, trying to avoid bullets, the dangerous CV that kills you when you fall on it, and getting the jetpack and aiming properly to get on platforms. Those were good days. Oh yeah, speaking of which, Road Rash. That was, that was epic, man, Road Rash. Just get on a bike, kick your opponents, beat them up with a chain. I get chased by cops, kick him out of the way as well. That was epic. And I just says my gaming started with Pinball and Dave. Then came the golden GTA Vice City days. I mean, yeah, I, back when my PC was still a potato PC back in those days itself. So 
I also started out with pinball and solitaire. Solitaire was OG. And Minesweeper, I could never complete that game. No matter how hard I tried. It gives you a false sense of achievement. When you click on certain squares and many of them open up and you're like, I'm good at this. And then the next one you click is a mile and you're like, God. And then I say, says, Tom Raider is going to get a revamp. No more Tom Raiding, I guess. Why am I saying Tom? It's Tomb. Tomb Raider. Yes, sorry about that. Tomb Raider is going to get a revamp. No more Tomb Raiding, I guess. What will be called then, man? If you're not going to rogue raid tombs, I have to change the name. Hungry Wolf is like, which reminds me, I need to rewatch the Mummy 1 and 2. Oh my god, the amount of times they've played the Mummy movies on Star Movies. Oh my god, I watched it plenty of times. Ali Xmas was like, Contra was big in India because a lot of people had their first console as the NES Lock of Mitashi. Yeah, I mean, even in my early days, I didn't have any console or even before I started on PC, I mean, my, my father bought me one of those uh, fake consoles with the two controllers and that gun controller with one cartridge that had like 999 games in it. So I spent a lot of time playing Duck Hunt, trying to shoot the ducks. Oh, as I am no ducks were harmed in the making of this podcast, but they were harmed in the game. And oh, as I was, even my mom played Road Rush. I mean, yeah, sometimes parents are also like, Oh, this seems interesting. Let me try it out. It's fun. And I should have said exactly the same thing. I said, best gaming console was the one with the cassette, which are 999 games. Man, I, as far as I know, those games were barely even 1 MB in size. They just decided to put all of them into that, all 8-bit games and into that one fuck cartridge. Angry Wolf is like, I can still hear the Road Rash's bike sound and the hitting of the club sound, yeah. I can also still hear the sound the guys make when they get hit by the chains and everything. Speaking of which, I mean, if you tried Road Redemption, apparently it's the successor to Road Rash. More 3D-ish and up to the times, I guess. I think I played when it was an alpha. Um, didn't like it as much as the OG Road Rash. Alex says, no one knows how to play Minesweeper. Everyone who says they do, they are lying. I mean, I can agree on that. No one can... Say that an expert in Minesweeper. OSM's like, the bikes in the garage road rush. Say what? The bikes in the garage road rush. Would you mind elaborating, please? Angry Wolf is like, anyone here play MDK games? What is MDK? Mario Donkey Kong? I don't know. Oh, which also means I also played uh, this. I also played Donkey Kong. I also played Super Mario Brothers. And also Mario where Donkey Kong keeps throwing barrels. I played all of those games. Back then having like 3D characters inside scrolling itself was like a huge thing. Like, oh my god, look at the graphics. <laughs> Back then that was awesome. Nowadays it's like in an RTX 1490, not RTX 1490, RTX, yeah, RTX 1490, need 36 GB of RAM and all that stuff to play with RT. <laughs> Sunday says, you all nubs, and you're a pleb, man. So yeah, Sunday is like chest to OP. Oh my god, uh... Yeah, I'm 28 years old and I do not know how to play chess yet. My younger cousins know how to play chess. In fact, lots of times they play it with their dad and they're pretty good at it. I still don't know how to play chess. <laughs> In Sanjay's like, I'm still waiting on chess 2 with RTX next gen upgrade. What are they going to do, man? Make all the chess pieces 3 or something? Angry was like MDK. Is it just called MDK? There's no full form to it? I don't know. So it sounds like you can buy bikes and road rides and the garage had these cool bikes. I tried to win races to buy the bikes and like Oh, there's actually a feature like that. I don't even remember progressing in the game that much. All I did was repeat the same game over and over again just to beat up the opponents and also the cop at the end. 
Agri will says at Sanjay that is the real world chess with path tracing. Go for battle chess. Mm, interesting. 3D chess. If you guys are smart enough, you should play 4D chess. That is a real challenge. Adi says, when is chess to arriving for a GTA 6 or Elder Scrolls? And I mean, speaking of chess, I should learn how to play chess. One of these days, I will learn how to play chess. So just like the chess we play is 2D. I mean, yeah, obviously. No was same as I used to kick the cup. Yeah, me too. He was always annoying when I was in the lead and he comes blaring with the sirens. I'm like, just kick him out of the way. Yeah, that was a good time. Most probably Road Rash was the demo. We all play the demo version. I think that could be true. Because... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, because I always raced with the same guy who had the purple and yellow suit, I guess. Same bike. Yeah, I think it was. Okay, technical issue there. I don't know what happened. My mouse is still not visible. And I accidentally ended up clicking something while I was looking at the comments. But yeah. Alexmas says, hot take. Donkey Kong is greater than Super Mario. Hmm, could be. He's a gorilla. Or an ape. I think it's more of a gorilla. Yeah, so Gorilla beats a man any day. Oh, Sam was like, no, the real ch challenge would be 5D chess multiverse. Seriously. And Erin is like, I'm still here. Thanks for still being here, man. Join in the conversation, man. Hungry Wolf was like, Battle Chess was made in 88 where the pieces were all humans with unique animations. By the way, Hungry Wolf, it's W-E-R-E, -E, not W-H-E-R-E. -E. Yeah. I can't let go of this habit of correcting people. Damn. And Aaron is like, yes, I'll buy when all DLCs are out or a complete edition or something. Fair enough. Your choice. I think I'll probably do the same. Maybe play what it is for now. The DLCs are good. Maybe I might buy the DLCs. Or I'll wait for a completion. Because that's the same thing I'm doing for Final Fantasy 16. I'm waiting for all the DLCs to be out. And then hope that they release a complete edition. And then perhaps I'll purchase that. Um, because one of the major annoyances of having a primary UAE account is that all the stuff is priced in dollars. Very expensive to buy these PSN wallets because they are all in dirhams, but since they have to buy be bought in dollars, they're all very expensive. So I'm like, nah, I can't buy DLCs on an Indian account and uh, play it on a UA account. So yeah, I still regret that is one of my biggest regrets since 2010 creating a UAE account when I was in Dubai instead of creating an Indian one. I feel like I could have done much more with an Indian account by now. But it is what it is. You make mistakes when you're young. And everyone is like, damn, I lost my XP. 
Well, you had a clean streak till now, man. It's no issues. Uh, happens to the best of us, including me. But the thing is, people don't seem to catch on. This is art. Apparently, it says that it's still running at 60 FPS and the signal is still strong. But apparently, 390 frames have been dropped. Did any of you see any frames dropping? I hope not. But yeah, mm. I'll have to say thank you to, to you guys because um, a good 20 minutes has passed with just conversation, which is nice. And this would have been over within 30 minutes itself, but now it's reaching close to an hour, which is good. Yeah. So anything else anyone want to add? Because if you don't, I'll probably wrap this up. Maybe another 30 seconds perhaps. Oh look, my mouse pointer is back. Okay, it's vanished again. Okay, it's back. I'm going to say some frames might have dropped in same stuff. Oh, come on, man. You, you are so fixated on me playing Sea of Stars, man. I lost my motivation. I should find my motivation. One day, one day I will do it. I'm generally, I'm quite basically a very lazy fellow. So, yeah, one day I should find my motivation to do it. I know Sam's like, next time I join early. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I look forward to it. But it's not compulsory. You can join when you want. And um, always be glad to have you. Surprisingly, Embracer Group has not been available for the podcast despite being one of the people who are like, why is there no podcast today? So, but when there is a podcast, she's missing. But okay, everyone has their own stuff to do the weekend so it's understandable I don't even like you cannot set me up and then not expect me to use that opportunity <laughs> I understand your feeling bro that's pretty much what happens every time everyone makes an error in their sentences on the server they are all pretty much setting me up to just correct them like I can't help it if you make a mistake so yeah it's become too much of a habit of mine. Right now it's become a sort of unique trait of ICG at this point. You make a grammatical error, it gets fixed. It gets fixed. Whether you decide to correct it afterwards or not, that's up to you. But I will be there and I will correct your grammar. Yeah. It reminds me of the meme that uh, Kabutar shared uh, of uh, uh, what is his name? Liam Neeson. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and correct your grammar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I was like, Embracer is doing deals and partnerships. Hence, you couldn't come. I am doubting the fact about doing deals and partnerships. I'll be more uh, convinced if it was shutting down studios or selling off studios. But yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah, mm. I'm it will be an hour, not bad. Ali XMS. All my mistakes are said, otherwise, my grammar is perfect. Is it though? Because it's spelled as G R A M M A R, not E R. Let's type it. Hey, look, Albino Pandas here. Hey, man, how are you doing? Uh, thank you for joining the podcast at least now. It is you know, I'm almost about to close it. But good. Angry Wolf, it's like final call. Anyone who enjoys Roller Coaster Tycoon, heard of it, never played it though. Uh, and then Alex was like, bro, pure nostalgia. What an amazing game it was. Uh, maybe I should try out Roller Coaster Tycoon. I don't think it's available for PS5. Maybe the old one. Oh, 
towards them. Hello, Panda. Speaking of Panda, has anyone watched Kung Fu Panda 4 yet? Any reviews on those who actually watched it? Or is it still not out yet? I don't know. I've not been keeping up with that. Hopefully, it's good. Because then I can probably watch it with my sister. Who knows? I'll be in a panda. As like, yes. Yes, as in you watched it? Or... Osam is like Sanjiro did. And he's also like, I watched Kung Fu Panda 4. So what are your reviews? Do you think it's good? Albino Panda is like, yes, I did. It's goof. Good. Okay, it's good. Okay. And Sanjay is like, it's quite bland. <clears throat> so Albino Panda, how would you compare it to the previous three movies? Like, which ones is better to, which one is not good to? Like, how we compare it? And Sanjay, bland in what regard? Boring story, boring uh, animation, music, blah blah blah. Hungry Wolf, it is also a goof. You were right the first time, I'll be the panda. And yeah, if it is a bad movie, it's probably a goof. As long as it's not goofy. Because if it's goofy, that would be a Disney movie. Goofy is still not a public domain yet. So, yeah. Kung Fu 4 is Kung Fu 2, but some but some else is new here. Story is boring. I mean, yeah, I mean, usually movies which stretch out for more than two or three movies, they generally become boring after like that. So, I'm looking at you, Ice Age, five movies. It got really boring after the third one. Mm -hmm. Ali XMS is like, are all pandas, so, sorry, are all pandas, albino pandas with just dark circles? Very interesting questions. Which, which makes me think, what exactly is an albino panda? Just a white panda? Or that just make it like a white bear? And Sanjay's like, okay, must some... Major English there. That sentence doesn't make sense. And has anyone ever watched the Indian version of Godzilla? It's an Indian version of Godzilla? Albina Pandas, most of the story is predictable. I mean, yeah, after this point, it is pretty predictable. Sundays are like pandas are just bears with insomnia, hence dark circles. What about the black part you see around their stomach area and all? What do you say to that? And I should also ask the same question as me. India has a Godzilla. Do we have a giant mutant lizard that eats atomic radiation? Not atomic radiation, just radiation in general. Yes, it was made in the 60s. Coca-Cola. What? Never heard of it. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Name itself sounds weird. And I said it's like best Indian movie was Desh Drohi. Desh Drohi. Sorry if I can't pronounce that right. Sanjay is like those are their shots. Who has shots around the stomachs, man? The black parts. Albino Panda is like pandas are lazy bears. I mean, I don't think they're lazy, they're just like very chill procrastinating bears because they're not out in the wild, a lot of them are raised in captivity. The zookeepers take care of their every need, so yeah, it's mostly, you know, they have a very carefree life. I sure is like, wow, the Coca-Cola poster looks awesome. I'm going to feel like this attacks Mumbai. Ali Aksum is like 100% agree with Aishwarya. And Sanjay is like, okay, the black parts are shirt and pants. Okay. 
Now he's a black due to insomnia. Fair enough. Albina Pan is like, thank God I escaped. Escaped zoo life. It was a very chill life, man. What did you ex what exactly did you escape from? Free food, protection, chill environment, and I have my phone here. Let me see. Go, go. Coca-Cola. Oh my god. Yep, this is definitely a monstrosity. I just saw the poster. And uh, I say it's like guy who knows panda. Pandas should be. 1966. Coca-Cola. Well, Angry Wolf, you made my day. Go go la. Nice. Nice. Albino Pan is like, can't answer those. I have signed an NDA. Fair enough. We don't want to know how every panda escapes his zoo. So, yeah. Right then, guys. I think it's time I wrap it up. You got anything else to add? Or shall we all hit the hay? Personally, I think YouTube should stop this lag thing. It's very odd waiting for 30 to 40 seconds for people to respond. Sanjay is like, hello guy who can't parry. Nice. And we have a new watcher, I mean sorry, new viewer. Raj Gauri, Sir Abdul J, I am a big fan. Oh, okay, thank you for that. Never seen you before. But uh, thank you and welcome to the podcast. We were just about to wrap up. Uh, so you are a bit late to the podcast, but thank you for coming in and saying you are a big fan. Angry will says good night AJ and the party. And I shall just like sleep and come on Discord. The squirrel will turn off its you. I'll be no panda says thanks AJ and everyone good night. Well, I guess that's the cue to wrap it up. So thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you to Albino Panda, Aishwarya, Hungry Wolf, Sanjay, Over Sam, um, Best Brethren, Erin, Adi, and did I miss anyone else? Halle Xmas, yes. And Harry Xmas and uh, did I miss anyone else? I hope not. And uh, Sin Seeper, yes, Sin Seeper. And Raj Gori, thank you all for joining. Uh, you guys helped uh, elongate the time of this podcast, which I've ended 30 minutes ago, but now it's been an hour. So thank you all for joining this conversation. You made it last this long. So. Raj Gauri Sunflower. Wait, Raj Gauri, are you millennial medic? Seems very doubtful because he's usually the guy who uses sunflower emojis. Mm. But yeah, uh, Halle Xmas is like, happy weekend guys, whatever's left of it anyways. Yeah, the same thing I'm going to say. Have a happy Sunday and uh, have a great week ahead guys. Um, we'll I'll see you next Saturday. Hopefully, Yashant will be with me. So, yeah, I'll have someone to banter with and it won't be just me blabbering. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, the border seems okay. Yeah, Sanjay says, thanks for extending our attention spans. Well, I didn't extend it. You guys just have a good attention span compared to younger folks. So, yeah, that's good on you guys. Once again, as usual, uh, like the video, subscribe, and watch more of our videos. We are still 
We still haven't reached the 300 watch hours mark, <laughs> let around 4,000. But someday, someday in the future, it'll happen. And I do not see this Dark Souls 3 playthrough happening anytime soon. I think I might end up getting Dark Souls trilogy before that happens. But um, yeah, maybe I might go up with some of the guys, the moderation team, and put it up maybe with Villar or something. But yeah, we'll see. Once again, thank you all for joining the podcast. I'll see you guys next week. Have a nice Sunday. Have a nice week ahead. This is me signing off. Bye-bye and good night.